Experience shows that the number of well-wishers after coup d'etats is close to zero. The situation is different for Burkina Faso's new military ruler, Ibrahim Traoré. Although he received the expected condemnation for his September 30 coup from the United Nations, the African Union, the European Union, and the West African Confederation ECOWAS, he also received benevolent words from Russia. Burkina Faso underwent two military coups in 2022, and the junta subsequently demanded that French troops withdraw from the country. Burkina Faso's new leader, says former junta leader Paul Henry Damiba, was relieved of his duties because he failed to quell jihadist attacks against the West African nation, and adds that the military will be in charge amid a pending national forum that will choose a president. Traoré's first commitment as president was to fight terrorism and restore the country's territorial integrity. The government reorganized the defense and security forces, acquired new military equipment, and recruited about 10,000 army and navy officials. He went ahead to hire about 90,000 volunteers for the defense of the homeland. This move received mixed responses from the army and the public due to concerns over their training, supervision, and long-term prospects, all of which could worsen insecurity. The government also created the Patriotic Support Fund to boost citizen engagement with security efforts. Another of Traoré's commitments was to deal with the country's humanitarian crisis. With nearly 2 million people internally displaced and over 36,000 refugees, Burkina Faso needs about 877 million US dollars to provide essential aid, shelter, healthcare, and support. But the funding gap remains, with great consequences for those in need. He also has a goal of rebuilding the state and improving governance. The junta passed important new legislation targeting clientelism and political patronage in the public service. Anti-corruption efforts led to the arrest of Vincent Dabogu, former transport minister, and four others who received 11-year prison sentences for embezzlement and money laundering. The last of Traoré's pledges was to supervise the holding of elections to restore constitutional and democratic rule come July 2024. With barely three months until the end of the transition, there's a lack of urgency on the case. In a state TV interview last September, Traoré said his priority was addressing insecurity and safeguarding the nation, not elections. Referring to the elections, he told reporters, it's not a priority, I'll tell you that clearly, it's security that's the priority in a country plagued by jihadist violence. This raised concerns among political parties that polls would be delayed, especially since the technical preparations haven't started. The poor security situation could also offer a pretext to postpone the elections indefinitely. Captain Ibrahim Traoré, since his rise to power, has not stopped making moves to better his nation and free them from the pressure of the West. He has a bold vision for Burkina Faso, aspiring to see a prosperous, stable, and united Burkina Faso, where every citizen has the opportunity to realize their full potential. The captain aims to boost Burkina Faso's economic growth by investing in agriculture, industry, infrastructure, and education. Creating jobs, reducing poverty, and improving the living conditions of the Burkinebi population. When it comes to education and healthcare, the captain knows that education and healthcare are pillars of human development. He plans to make substantial investments in these sectors to ensure equitable access to quality education and adequate healthcare services for all Burkinebes. For Ibrahim Traoré, national unity is essential. He seeks to bring together the different ethnicities, religious groups, and regions of Burkina Faso by fostering dialogue, mutual respect, and tolerance. Ibrahim Traoré's arrival has raised great hopes among the population given the security situation. A great deal of effort has been made on the ground to reconquer localities. At the time of the coup, the country's second in eight months, Captain Traoré had promised that resolving a few minor logistical problems and considerations within the army would enable him to regain control. In the space of a year, 
the new regime focused its efforts on a strong security response to these attacks by groups linked to Al-Qaeda and the Islamic State. Massive recruitment of volunteers for the defense of the homeland, VDP, civilian auxiliaries to the army, purchase of drones and helicopters, neutralization of jihadists, and trips by President Trahore to the field to motivate troops. As promised, President Ibrahim Traoré was committed to fighting terrorism and respecting ECOWAS transition timetable. But recently, Burkina Faso, along with neighbors Mali and Niger gave notice of their immediate withdrawal from ECOWAS. This decision adds to doubts about Burkina Faso's ability to meet its transition deadlines. Burkina Faso has strengthened its political and military cooperation with Mali and Niger. Although as the ECOWAS withdrawal shows, this has come at the expense of stronger regional, and in some cases, international ties. Suggesting that more changes may occur coming from him, the junta leader mentioned that things were unfolding and that more changes were coming, not just about currency, but they envisioned breaking all ties that kept them in slavery. Captain Traoré also clarified that Burkina Faso has no plans to rejoin ECOWAS. To justify that exit from the economic community of West Africa, the three countries, now collectively known as the Alliance of Sahel States, S, accused the regional organization of not assisting them against jihadists and deviating from the ideals of its founding fathers and pan-Africanism. This alliance gives them political cover and support in the face of growing pressure from ECOWAS and other regional institutions to comply with their transition deadlines. Not only did Burkina Faso withdraw from ECOWAS, Captain Ibrahim Trahare shocked everyone with another move by constructing a gold refinery. He recently launched the construction of the country's first refinery for gold, Burkina's main mineral resource. This refinery will have a production capacity of about 400 kilograms of gold per day. Gold for some time now has been Burkina Faso's leading export product, but they had no control over gold. The mining sector accounts for 14.3% of Burkina's state revenue, according to data from the Extractive Industries Transparency Initiative. However, gold production in the country fell from 66.8 tons in 2021 to 57.6 tons in 2022, marking a 13.7% drop. The idea of the country's own gold refinery is to refine domestic production of the country's leading export in the country rather than abroad. By doing this, state revenue increases greatly. For over 12 months now, several French media have been suspended, including RFI, France 24, and June Afrique, and correspondents from Liberation and Le Monde have been expelled. Burkina Faso's Radio Omega was suspended for a month for interviewing an opponent of the military regime in neighboring Niger. On the diplomatic front, Burkina Faso has chosen to diversify its international partners since Captain Traoré came to power. President Traoré went ahead to ask the French soldiers present on their territory to pack up in February, thereby multiplying contacts with countries such as Iran, Russia, and Venezuela. In West Africa, he signed a charter establishing the Alliance des Tats du Sahel, AES, a collective defense and mutual assistance alliance, with neighboring Mali and Niger, also led by soldiers who came to power through coups. Russia has been Ibrahim Trahore's supporter from the beginning. They recently announced a visa-free travel regime with all African countries. In early September 2023, Local Russian media was abuzzed with the latest information emerging from the Russian Ministry of Foreign Affairs that Russia plans a visa-free regime with all African countries, referring to the fact that it was within the framework of Russia and Africa's action plan adopted at the second Russia-African summit in St. Petersburg. Investigations and research indicate that Russia has visa-free agreements with six or more African countries. By doing this, they aid in developing or facilitating work, easing contacts with African countries. Furthermore, Russia's extensive courtship of Burkina Faso in recent months has included 25,000 metric tons of free wheat, 
an agreement to build a nuclear power plant, a personal security detail for junta leader Captain Ibrahim Traoré, and now 100 paramilitary fighters. To assist with the situation of insecurity in Burkina Faso, a contingent of Russian military personnel flew into Burkina Faso's capital Ouagadougou in what appeared to be the first significant deployment of Russian troops to the West African country. African Initiative, a pro-Kremlin Russian news agency that covers African affairs, showed men in army fatigues unloading equipment from a plane with a Russian flag and a blurred number on its tail. The aircraft pictured on the sun-baked tarmac was an Il-76, long the workhorse of the Russian military. A Russian contingent of 100 people will ensure the safety of the country's leader, Ibrahim Traoré, and the Burkina Bay people from terrorist attacks. And shortly after, the units will be replenished with another 200 military personnel from Russia. They will train Burkina Bay forces and patrol dangerous areas. On the other hand, President Ibrahim Raisi of Iran lauded African countries for resisting colonialism during a visit by Burkina Faso's foreign minister. He praised the resistance of African countries in the face of colonialism and terrorism during a meeting in Tehran with Burkina Faso's foreign minister Olivier Rwamba, without specifically mentioning France. He hailed this stance as a sign of vigilance and awakening. During the meeting, Racy expressed Iran's willingness to share its experiences and achievements with friendly African countries and bolster bilateral relations with Iran. Burkina Faso and Iran lately have been working on ways to take advantage of their differences and build partnerships that would benefit both parties, unlocking unrealized economic potential. Iran has been bolstering ties across the African continent in an effort to reduce its isolation and offset the impact of crippling sanctions reimposed since the 2018 withdrawal of the United States from a painstakingly negotiated nuclear deal. In July, Raisi set out on a rare Africa tour that took him to Kenya, Uganda, and Zimbabwe. And while Russia is suffering bitter setbacks in the Ukraine war, it is successfully expanding its influence in Africa. With Burkina Faso, Moscow has succeeded in detaching another country from the French sphere of influence. The Kremlin was not only motivated by security policy, but also by digging into the resources available. Iran and Russia see these cubes as a valuable geopolitical opportunity to build stronger relationships in Africa. Stay with us as we keep bringing to you updates about African affairs.